In this video, we'll learn how to handle events that occur when the user interacts with our website or our web application. Up to this point, we have been using jQuery to access elements within the document object model, basically elements that exist on our web page, such as paragraphs, divs, and so forth. In this exercise, we'll learn how to use the bind method to create event handlers on those DOM elements that we've located with jQuery methods that we've been using. I've opened up the finished file so that you can see what will be made interactive here. We have an image, and when you mouse over that image, typically the cursor will not change to a pointing finger as you see here. Instead, the cursor icon usually remains as an arrow. So that's one interactive effect that we'll add here. In addition, when you click on the image, we'll pop up an alert box. In your code editor, you'll need to open the file exercise underscore one dot HTML from the chapter seven directory. We've got a script block at the top and a document ready function. We'll place our code inside of the ready function. Our goal in this lesson is to learn the jQuery bind method. So first, we'll access the element that we need to be made interactive, and then we'll execute the bind method on that element. First, let's look at the structure of this file. And you'll see on line 27 that we've got an image and it has an ID of jQuery. Remember, the image is what's interactive here because it responds to our mouse over, changing the cursor to a pointing finger, and it responds to the click by popping up the alert box. So this is the image that needs to be accessed by way of jQuery. So we'll use the ID for that. We'll invoke the jQuery method and pass to it the div denoted by the pound symbol, and using quotes, of course. So we've now used jQuery to access this image and we want to add an event handler to the image. So if you've done any JavaScript coding or any object-oriented scripting languages, you might be familiar with this function called the add event listener. And that's essentially what the bind method is going to do. It's going to bind this to an event handler function, or alternatively, allow us to write this function inline into the bind method. So we call on the bind method, and inside we indicate two things, the event that we're trying to bind to, followed by the function we want to execute when the event takes place. So we're going to start by changing the cursor from the arrow to the pointing finger, and we've determined that we want that to take place on the mouse over event. So that's the first argument to the bind method. What event are we binding to? The second argument is the function. We're going to write a function within a set of curly braces. We're going to take the current object, the object we found with jQuery, the image whose ID is jQuery, and we can access that through another jQuery, but we just pass it this, meaning this object, the one that we're currently inside of, due to our jQuery command. And then we invoke the CSS method that we've used before, and the property that we want to change or set here is the cursor. And the value of that property is the pointer. And then I'll just go ahead and tighten up some of these closing braces. And then we can save and test this file in the browser. And you should see, if you mouse out to the right of the graphic, that you have the arrow cursor. Now if you move your cursor onto the image, you see the cursor change to the pointing finger. To handle the click of the image, we have a couple of options. We could highlight all this code, and we'll go ahead and do that. We'll copy it, and paste it directly below. And then you can think about the modifications you'd have to make to this code. So for example, we're still looking at the jQuery image, so there's nothing to change there. But we don't want to listen for the mouse over event. On this one, we want to listen for the click event. And we want to execute a different piece of code. Instead of just changing some CSS, what we're going to do is pop up an alert box that says the URL for jQuery is, and then point to the jQuery website. And we've got an alert box that says the URL for jQuery is. And now we're going to respond to the click of the image. And you can save and test this file in the browser. And we have the mouse over effect still in place, but now we have the click as well. It's conceivable that you would have many event handlers firing off occurring on different events of this jQuery image, and this type of code could get tedious. So what we're going to learn next is a shortcut technique. So we'll do this by modifying all of the existing code. What I'm going to do is delete all the way up to the opening curly brace for our initial mouse over function. So highlight that code and delete it, and then we'll go ahead and start modifying this code. 
So we still want to bind here, but we're going to replace what goes on inside the bind. So let's delete up to there as well. And we'll start with some different syntax here. We'll start with a curly brace after our initial opening parentheses because we're basically going to put both event handlers here. We're going to put the click event handler, and below it, we're going to put the mouse over event handler. And you may have noticed that they're followed by colons now. And what follows those colons are the event handlers themselves. So a function and then another set of curly braces to indicate what should happen on this event. And we'll go back to our initial alert box that says the URL for jQuery is jQuery.org. Close our parentheses, close our curly brace, and here's where the syntax is a bit familiar from previous exercises. So you may recognize the fact that we need a comma here because we are now responding to both the click and the mouse over. So we're not quite done with this, so we use the comma to move on to the next event handler, which is the function that takes place on mouse over, and that was the CSS changing the cursor property to a pointer. And the last thing we need to do is make sure we have the closing curly braces in place for both the event handler we just wrote and the document ready function. So you might want to proofread this quickly before we go ahead and save it and then we'll test the file in the browser. Let's check this in the browser now and we'll see we have both events still being handled exactly as they were when they were written as two discrete event handlers with two bind methods. There's our mouse over, and there's our click. So we're basically getting the same functionality, but we're only writing one bind method. This chapter served as an introduction into how to create event handlers with jQuery using the bind method, and you learned how to call multiple event handlers with just one call to the bind method.